back here. Um, <clears throat> it's a little refrigeration work. Actually, I did a little tear down here. A uh, whole lot of bits and pieces. This was the emulator. You watched it in the previous videos. It's completely been stripped down. Getting ready to do a uh, a new uh, new modification. So um, I uh, should have taken some earlier videos of this and just edited them together. But I what I did here was pour two uh, thermocouple um, uh, liquid gas sensors, temperature sensors. Uh, I'm going to let these cure here for a couple of minutes before I move them. Um, and then I will uh, let them cure for a full 24 hours before I uh, put any pressure to them. Um, these, these have gotten to be pretty reliable, and I, I have a method. It might be crude by some people's standards, but uh, it, it does work, and, and they don't appear to leak at all, um, rupture or anything like that. I've gone through a few failures. Um, what I did here, I have one that's finished. <clears throat> a little longer than it probably ever had to be. Um, but um, what happens is, um, trying to install one of these, these wires, see if you can see it down in there. There you can see the tip just suspended right in the, in the uh, T. So quarter inch lines get hooked to both ends of this, and of course the passing refrigerant stream um, registers a uh, temperature response um, that can be read. So I make a short little uh, stub, flare it. Um, I uh, crimp the copper a little bit to get a good mechanical adhesion between this uh, epoxy casting and the, uh, the, uh, the copper. And um, I uh, place the sensor down inside, uh, measure it um, to where the top of the copper is, and then pick a small spot about three quarters of an inch and uh, shave the insulation away. Because if you don't, um, gas will pass right through that insulation along the wires and all the way out to the plug and leak. Um, so that's why this casting has to be so long. Um, I cast it by um, just wrapping electrical tape around the base of the copper here until um, I can take a piece of tubing. It's like a, I think, half inch diameter tubing um, vinyl and just slide it down over to it's kind of snug. And then, of course, it's deep enough that it'll be able to cover all the wires and everything there. Anyway, um, I uh, just place the wire down inside. Uh, this one, I covered up the threads on this T so I didn't accidentally dribble, dribble any uh, epoxy on there. Uh, the epoxy that I used, the first stuff I went to Ace Hardware and bought, um, it got kind of expensive. The two-part plunger, um, kept going through those rather quickly, got to say that. Went to Harbor Freight and this stuff was uh, a lot cheaper. I thought, well, what the hell, give it a shot, it works just fine. Um, it's just a matter of trying to make sure you get, get the uh, puddles re relatively even. Um, mix it up, have a few minutes to uh, work with it, drizzle it down inside, and then I take a, um, a, a old zip tie and I run it down in between the copper and the inside wall of the tubing just to make sure there's no air pockets in there because I've had that problem in earlier versions of it. And um, anyway, I let her settle up, make sure the wire is more or less straight, uh, constantly check to make sure that the, uh, the tip is suspended in there and not in contact with the brass. And um, after you know a minute or two, I'm able to let it go. I'll let it sit here for a few minutes, and uh, 24 hours from now, this should be ready to go. Now, this one here is quite a bit different. Um, overall, same construction technique, but uh, you can see there's no T on it, and the wire is considerably longer sticking through than with the T. The reason for that is this one's actually going to be mounted inside of a um, <clears throat> probably to the side of a one-inch copper pipe. I'm going to drill a hole and um, braze this stub. You can see it has male quarter inch flare here so once this sets up I can just unscrew this hopefully, hopefully there's not any epoxy in there um, and uh, then I'll just have this loose brass and copper uh, part and I'll uh, drill a hole in the side of the, uh, the column that I want to measure the temperature in and braze this stub into it and then once I'm done with that I should be able to just put the whole thermocouple assembly back in, screw it screw it on and, and tighten it down and then this this thermocouple will just be suspended out inside the um, separator tank of the uh, the next ebulator. So um, that's that's pretty much it. There's not much to it. Um, that's my technique. I couldn't really find any uh, examples of anybody trying to build something like this, something for relatively high pressure. Um, but uh, it works for me and if it's something that's useful to you, you know, have at it. Um, Went through a few versions until I got to this point. I got a few few scrap ones here. Uh, this one blew out. You can see that it was tried. I tried to recode it a number of times. That was kind of when I was discovering the problem with the fiberglass. 
Um, this one here is good. It's a little ugly, but it's a very early version. Um, this was previously the last one I made. It's probably the nicest one. Uh, this epoxy is clear. This, some of the other stuff I got kind of had a yellow tinge to it. Uh, this one's for a 3 8 The first 3 8 one I tried to make, um, <clears throat> I screwed up and it drizzled down inside the uh, the brass tee. So rather than let that happen again, I just made this tee quick and um, that one works just fine. The one that did fail most recently was actually placed right here on the discharge of the compressor. And uh, I had this thing running in a very, very hot very, very hot. I mean, it would steam when you feel, rubbed a rag on it. It was ridiculous. And uh, I think what happened was the copper expanded inside the epoxy and split it, popped. And, uh, you know, once it cooled down and stuff, it it began leaking. So that was a failure. But, um, you know, I know I have a relatively good idea what the limitations are of these things. So anyway, have fun.